Well, good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to Wednesday in the Word. If you've not been with us before, my name is Mike Cahill, and uh, this time is what it sounds like. It is a time where uh, I just have an opportunity to gather with you in a few minutes uh, to help you get into God's Word, and uh, and it's Wednesday. It's that hump day uh, in the middle of the week where uh, maybe we need to get into the Word together. As I have been doing these now for a number of weeks, I've begun to think, man, I, I need to do some sort of a series um, so that uh, everything is um, sequential and uh, it's chronological and, and it makes sense uh, so that we're not just jumping around the Bible having a good time. So uh, I'm going to take some thoughts from a, a friend of mine who wrote a book. His name is Eric Smith, and he wrote a little book called The Jesus Prequel. Here it is. Uh, it's a fantastic little book in which he tries to look at the Old Testament and raise awareness for us about some of the things that uh, Jesus is doing and the gospel writers are doing in particular uh, with Jesus uh, when it comes to insight into how we read our gospels. And so today uh, we're going to look at a particular story of Jesus walking on water in Mark chapter 6. And uh, how Mark talks about Jesus uh, coming out on the lake. Um, so we're going to talk about that. But before we do that, uh, I want to look backwards before we look forwards. I want to look back at the Old Testament before we move forward uh, to the New Testament in Jesus. I want to look back at the background uh, that Mark is probably offering to his readers that may be lost on some of us who read the Bible right now. So uh, one of the primary redemptive events for all of Israel, if you read the Old Testament, is deliverance from Egypt, right? Some of you know this story. Uh, the people of God, God's people are in Egypt. They have uh, originally found themselves there because uh, there was a famine in the land. They go to Egypt. All of Israel goes there. Uh, they're numerous in number. Uh, there was a pharaoh that uh, knew, knew not um, of these people, um, and uh, he makes them to be slaves, okay? He, he makes them to be slaves, and uh, for hundreds, hundreds of years, they're enslaved by the pharaohs, uh, and really, it's, it begins to have this narrative of God has forgotten us, uh, what is God doing, and here appears on the scene Moses, right? We know the uh, the miraculous uh, story of Moses in his, his infancy as well as later on. And something happens uh, with Moses. He's out in the desert. He's escaped Egypt. He's in the desert. He's been a shepherd now for many years. He's an older man now, and uh, God shows up to him in a burning bush. And one of the things that uh, God says to Moses in this burning bush is, here I am, here I am. And what he's saying is, uh, that he is expressing a willingness uh, to listen. And uh, Moses says, here I am, here I am, uh, God, I'm here uh, with the burning bush, okay? Um, and later on, he comes, Moses comes to God and he says, uh, who is it that I should say has sent me? And in order to uh, describe the supremacy of who God is, God just says, tell him I am. And this was a sign of absolute supremacy and sovereignty over any gods of, of, uh, of Egypt. And Moses has this message of I am. And so uh, maybe you know the story. Uh, the people are freed. Moses is a huge part of that. God uses him to do miraculous things. The parting of the Red Sea, uh, the giving of the law at Sinai. I mean, God is present. These are like theophany events. Uh, theophany are, uh, events are, are really events where God shows up. Uh, another theophany event in the New Testament is when Jesus goes up onto the mountain transfiguration and he's shown to his disciples, okay? So all of this has happened, okay? And, um, uh, you know, Moses uh, essentially says, God, I want a little more. I want a little more of you. And, and so in Exodus, in Exodus chapter uh, 33, verses uh, 12 and 13, it says, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you, whom you will send with me. 
Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. And this is Moses telling God, hey, I, I want a little more of you. I want a little more. And so God, um, God says to Moses, essentially, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out. I'm going to do that for you. And in Exodus 33, again, a few verses later, in verses 20 through 23, this is what it says. You cannot see my face, for no one can see my face and live. Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while, I'm, while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So God says, hey, I'm going to show you my glory, but your face, uh, my face, you're not going to see. I'm going to, I'm going to show you by passing by. I'm going to show you my glory by passing by. So here is Moses. He has questions, serious questions at the start about how God is going to be glorified through him. He's got serious questions to God about, God, can you actually use me? I'm scared. I'm afraid. Moses comes to be used in an incredible way, and he says, I want more of you. I want you to show me your glory, and God does, and he does that by passing by. So there's a couple key elements here. Number one, God said, I am, right? Moses said, here I am, and God passes by. Now, all of that, I think, might be background to what we see in Mark chapter 6, and Jesus walking on the water. So in Mark chapter 6, Jesus has just, actually, he has just uh, uh, performed a miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, and uh, he has instructed the disciples to go out on the lake, okay? So verse 47, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down, and they were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the lows. Their hearts had been hardened. Now, what's going on here? One of the things that Mark tells us is that when Jesus goes out on the lake, he had intended to what? He had intended to pass by them. He had intended to pass by them. And, and what does he say? Immediately, when they were scared, when they were terrified, the text says, he says, take courage, it is I. Another way of saying that or translating that is, I am. I wonder with you if Mark understood that there was a correlation between these disciples who are trying to say to Jesus, here I am, let me serve you, let me follow you, I will follow you. But they're kind of stuck in, um, well, they don't quite recognize who Jesus is just yet. And in the midst of all of that, God wants to show them his glory. And so he realizes this, and Jesus walks out intending to pass by them to show God's glory to them, to do the thing that none of us can do by walking on the water. And then when they're afraid, he responds in the same way when Moses was afraid, that God shared with Moses, I am, Jesus says, it is I. In other words, I am. And so as the disciples are afraid, God passes by in order to show them glory. They're going to have great opportunities to do great things for God's glory. And they're going to be shown God's glory. And they're going to be under the, the, uh, the sovereignty of the great I am, the one who is controller of all other things the one who is sovereign God. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe you, have, you and I have been scared like Moses or the disciples. And I just wonder if today 
we have an opportunity to begin to pray. Lord, would you show your glory that you might be glorified? Would you be willing to say to us, I am has sent you? Maybe we can pray that together. Lord God, let your glory shine through us and may you show us your glory. As we see you, may we glorify you. And Lord God, as we are scared, as we are terrified perhaps at the mission that you have given, may we wave the flag and the banner of the great I am, knowing it's not about us, but it is about you. And may we serve you well. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed the Wednesday in the Word. Uh, next week, we'll tackle another uh, scene uh, with Jesus in the Gospels and the background that maybe we've forgotten about or didn't know about and uh, gain greater insight into how to read God's Word. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of Wednesday in the Word. God bless.